Today's video, we are talking about Schluter Curdy waterproofing. Is it waterproof? And how does it work? I've made a Curdy test, which is 30 inches by 40 inches deep. I also put a drain in the middle. This is very important because the drain and the perimeter banding of this waterproofing system are the most vulnerable to leaks. Actually, those are the most vulnerable areas to most waterproofing systems. I also made the test out of cardboard. That's because we are going to put 15 gallons of water. That's 125 pounds of water in this test. And I want the joints to get flexed a little bit. With that much water, it'll push out on the cardboard and stress these joints in here. Just like it would if your wall was going to move or dry out a little bit. But it's going to exaggerate it with this cardboard. We're also going to flood this test for seven days. So that means it'll have 125 pounds of water on it for seven days. That's way above the industry standard. The ASTM tests call for 48 hour testing for waterproof approval. And your local code generally requires 24 hour test. So we are really going to push this system to the limit and see what it can do. Now before we do any testing, let me show you how I made this test sample. Let's start by cutting the cardboard down to size. You definitely don't need a sliding table saw for this, but it sure does make it easy. Next we need to score the cardboard at all the folds, cutting only halfway through the sheet. This is a great method to make custom sized boxes. Just make sure you lay the lines out accurately. Now cut the tabs to make the folds. Make sure you know what side you want to fold before cutting. I like to use hot melt glue when putting boxes together. I find this to be the strongest way and the boxes really hold together well. Here it is completed and this is a very strong box. Time to draw out the drain. The inner circle will be completely cut out. The outer line is the drain flange and the middle line is a guide for the router. Now we're going to cut out the inner circle. This is where the drain goes. Routing out for the drain flange. I start by setting the router to half the thickness of the cardboard, then route out to my lines. It's a little tricky routing out cardboard as the paper gets stuck in the router, but it worked okay. Now it's time to set the drain in place and we're back to using the trusty old hot melt gun. This is a great way to glue dissimilar materials together. It really works well and it has great holding power. Now it's time to install the curdy. Starting with the preformed corners. It's very important to key in the mortar. This means to press the thin set in with the flat part of your trowel. This ensures a mechanical bond with the substrate. Then use the notch side of the trowel to set the thickness. I put the corners in first, then the vertical banding, then the horizontal banding, next the walls, and last the floor. You'll notice the horizontal banding doesn't go all the way to the corner. That's because the preformed corners are designed to get a two inch overlap before the corner so there is less buildup. Here it is completed and ready for water. We're going to let the water sit in the curdy test for seven days before we take it apart. Now let's look at how the system actually works. Being that it's a waterproofing membrane, we should probably understand a little bit about water. We all know the chemical name for water is H2O, standing for two hydrogen and one oxygen atom. Here I have a molecule of water. The blue represents the oxygen and the red is the two hydrogen. This is what's called a polar molecule. 
That's because the oxygen atom is negatively charged and the hydrogen atoms are positively charged. This creates what's called a dipole where one side of the molecule is negative and the other side is positive. And when you have two molecules, this creates a hydrogen bond where the positive hydrogen bonds to the negative oxygen. And this happens all around the molecule in a body of water. Water has four main characteristics we are most concerned with. First is cohesion. This is the molecular force between light particles that attract and bond the substance together. In the case of water, it's a hydrogen bond, hydrogen bonding to the oxygen. Second is surface tension. This is a result of the cohesive properties of water. You can see in the body of water, it's surrounded by molecules bonding together evenly all throughout the substance. This balances the water. At the surface, all of the molecules are pulling only on one side. There's no water above the surface. This causes the molecules to pull together, creating a tension known as surface tension. Let me show you some examples of surface tension. You can see that the water builds up three times the height of the coin and holds its shape. This is due to surface tension. When you apply a surfactant like soap, it breaks the surface tension of the water and the water flows out. The third property of water is called adhesion. This is the ability for water to adhere to another substance other than itself. So you have two main properties there. Cohesion, which is the ability for water to stick to itself, and adhesion is the ability for water to stick to another substance. Here are some examples. When the ruler gets close to the water, you can see the water attract and adhere to the ruler, causing the surface tension to break and the water flows away. And the fourth property of water is called capillary action. This is actually a combination of the first three, of the cohesive properties, the surface tension, and the adhesive properties of water. Let me show you some examples. Here I've marked a paper towel with a black marker. You can see as the water rises up, it takes some of the ink from the marker with it. This is capillary action. Okay, now that we've looked at some of the properties of water, now we need to look at the material itself because materials have different properties in the way they interact with water. Those two properties are called hydrophobic and hydrophilic. Hydro obviously means water, and phobic means fear of. So this is a substance that doesn't want to have anything to do with water. They repel each other. Hydrophilic, philic means a liking or affinity for. This is a substance that wants water molecules to join with it. So it would be hydrophilic. Now obviously a waterproofing membrane we would want to be hydrophobic so that water wouldn't want to adhere to it or absorb into it. And one of the ways to tell whether a surface is hydrophobic or hydrophilic is to do a drop test. That's where you put a drop of water on top of your material and you look at the angle that the bubble of the water forms. If that angle is over 90 degrees, then the surface is considered hydrophobic. If that angle is spread out and lower than 90 degrees, then it's called hydrophilic. Let's look at an example using curdy membrane and a piece of wood, like you'd see in the framing of a house. Notice that the water drop doesn't absorb into the membrane and curves in under itself at the base. This is called the contact angle, and because it's greater than 90 degrees, that makes it hydrophobic. Placing a drop on wood, you can see it doesn't curve under itself, flattens out, and is absorbed into the wood with a contact angle less than 90 degrees, making it a hydrophilic surface. Time to drain the test and see if Curdy really works. I gotta say, this little pump has come in handy many times. So, it's been seven days and all the water is drained out. Now it's time to remove the Curdy and see if any water leaked in. But first, let's take a look at the box and see if we have any signs of leaking through the cardboard. So the five vulnerable areas are the four corners and around the drain. As you can see, there are no signs of leaking at the corners 
or around the drainer. So we're looking good. Now, let's pull up the curtain. Man, I have to say, this was tough stuff to get off. Curdy really sticks well. You should have no worries about it coming off the wall, that's for sure. Here I'm checking the moisture content on the outside of the box to get a base reading. And it's showing 6% straight across. Now I can check the inside compared to the outside. And you can see the reading is the same, showing no moisture got into the box. Now let's look at how Curdy works as a system. Here is a sample of two pieces of Curdy adhered together by Thinset, just like you would in a shower application with a two inch overlap. The curdy is 20 mils thick and together 40 mils. The thin set ranges around 25 mils, making the whole system around 65 mils thick. The thickness of the thin set is very important because we know thin set is very hydrophilic and will easily absorb water. What prevents the water from getting through the thin set is its applied thickness. Because the thin set is so thin, just enough to bond the membranes together, water can't absorb all around the thin set. It has to absorb in a narrow line linearly. This means there isn't much attractive force pulling the water into the thin set and breaking the water's surface tension. Notice that force is a factor. That's why Curdy is not recommended for tubs or tanks or to be submerged in water for long periods of time. With enough pressure, the water could be pushed through the thin set and compromise the waterproofing. But unless you plan on taking seven day long showers, you probably have nothing to worry about. Well, I hope this video has been helpful. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you have any other questions about building or products, put it in the messages and I'll add it to the video list. If you haven't subscribed already, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you next time. <music>